I've got an amazing video plan for us today. Take a look at this. Since the bike's all stripped out, I have full access to the electrical system. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and add an EFI device. I'm also gonna go ahead and put an O2 sensor gauge as well as a tap of fuse so that we can pull some power off and get those accessories to work. Let's take a look at what I've got going on here. This is the mini add a circuit holder where we're gonna go ahead and tap some power, switched power, which means when you turn the key, this will get power. Next, you probably recognize this from a previous build where I chose not to install this. This is a Mini 3 air to fuel ratio meter meant for a Honda Grom. In that previous video, I chose not to install this because it has the wrong connector, but we're gonna go ahead and cut into the O2 sensor wire this time around. Finally, here's the EFI device. That's an EFIE. It's an electronic fuel injector enhancer device. It's made by Eagle Research. And what this does is it'll actually also tap into that O2 sensor wire signal and adjust the signal going into the engine control module on the motorcycle. This will allow it to fake out the engine control module to think it's running a lot leaner than it is and hopefully the engine control module will respond by giving it more fuel thus richening the mixture. I wanted to do a quick sit down and discuss why you need to add some sort of fuel controller to a motorcycle. In this case I'm using the EFI device to do that plus a larger fuel injector and the stock ECM. So basically an engine is an air pump and as you ingest more air you have to ingest more fuel and the stock ECM can do that. It's supposed to be able to adjust up and down within the parameters of the fuel injector that you have. A larger fuel injector will allow the ECM to control more fuel. However, it will always target a stoichiometric or 14.7 to 1 air to fuel ratio, which is great for normal cruising and low compression applications. When you go up to a higher compression, higher capacity piston and cylinder group, you increase the amount of heat that's generated by the engine. And because this is an air-cooled engine, it's not even an oil air-cooled engine, just a straight air-cooled engine, you're gonna increase the temperature and you have a tendency to melt pistons, do really bad things to the oil and the rest of the bike. You have to go ahead and richen the mixture and allow the extra fuel to actually help cool the piston and cylinder combination because there's no other way for the heat to get out. We take the O2 sensor wire, we cut it in half, and then connect the closer half to the O2 sensor to the white wire on the EFI device. Then the green wire will come in and connect into the other half of the O2 wire that goes into the plug that then returns the signal back to the engine control module. We then connect the red wire into our switch 12 volt circuit and the black wire we're going to go ahead and connect into that common ground on the motorcycle. And that basically gives us FE plus stock ECM equals poor man's auto-tune fuel controller without a gauge. So again, we're going to be a little bit dangerous, but I'm just going to start breaking in the motorcycle. I want to investigate the air fuel ratio gauge a little bit closer. I was getting some funny results from it. I wanted to point out one more thing. You will want to connect a multimeter to this junction and to this junction and read the DC voltage. It should be right at 250 millivolts. If not, you adjust this little screw that's on the FE device. I'll show that. Here's where we're gonna go ahead and get that switched power. There's a little fuse holder right here, 10 amp. We just go ahead and pull that off. It's a little bit of a struggle, but get it off there. Then we're gonna open this up and there's your 10 amp fuse. We're gonna go ahead and pull this fuse out, see which guy goes live when we switch on the power of the motorcycle. And then we're gonna tap off of that. Now, if you don't have a multimeter, what these things do You've got a couple of electric probes, both a positive side and a negative side. This allows you to measure voltage, ohmage, uh, amperage, as well as a couple of other functions. In this particular case, I'm switching it over to DC volts, and then we're going to go ahead and see which of these leads is live so that we can make sure that we are protected with a fuse on the tapped power that we take off this. Switching on the motorcycle, the negative on the ground, which is this right here, this is a great grounding spot. I'm just going to reach in here and find which one goes to 12 volts. So that one looks live right now, 12.5 volts, which looks great. I'm gonna check the other one just to double check. We have basically zero volts. It says 9.2 millivolts, which is basically nothing. So with the motorcycle switched off, you can see this now has zero volts coming into it. So this is the perfect place to take power for an accessory that requires it when you turn the motorcycle on, such as the EFI device. Let's go ahead and pull this mini add a circuit holder out of its case. 
This lead here is the one that taps power. So we're gonna plug this into that 12 volts. Just like this, replace our 10 amp fuse in the bottom slot that protects the motorcycle. Add another 10 amp fuse that actually protects our new circuit that comes off of this positive lead here. Down here on the head is your O2 sensor. Follow this wire up and you can see it connects right here into the motorcycle. Go ahead and disconnect the O2 sensor wire. You press down right here and just pull it straight down. And we're gonna cut that wire in half and tap into it. The red goes to your switch 12 volt power. Your black goes to your ground. The white wire is going to go to your O2 sensor and your green wire is going to go to the ECU. On the back of this EFI device, you can see that there are a couple little pieces of the circuit board poking through the, the protective rubber. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it in this stretchy, self-sealing silicone wrap. And then you stretch it for this final little bit. It grabs onto itself like that. It's pretty, pretty amazing stuff. All right, guys, I've got the EFI device now connected up. I've gone ahead and adjusted this little screw here, that you can see right up here, so that it reads 250 millivolts, which is what it should read. Obviously, this is a very temporary setup for this EFI device. You can see I'm using alligator clips and a lot of fun. But uh, just trying to see if I can get the centered before I lock it down. Yeah, there's wires basically all over this bike right now. After getting this EFI set to 250 millivolts, I decided to put a little uh, nail polish on there to hold it in place. I found these really neat connectors at the local auto parts store. I'm going to use these so that I can reverse anything that I want or change any configuration. So these 91440 Dorman connectors, these are going to be your single wire. And then I also bought one of these 91441, which is actually a dual wire. I'll use that for the power supply. Here's what the wiring looks like. Here's your O2 sensor wire coming up here. And then here's my first connector going into the white wire of the EFI device. Then you've got the green wire coming around back this way. And he's connecting back down into this connector, which then goes into here, which is the ECM connecting position. And then finally, we've got our power supply up here, connecting into the black and red wires of the EFI device. I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I had a lot of fun putting it together. Again, like and subscribe if you like this type of content. This 164cc uh, build has become kind of a saga, so we'll report back on all the results as we continue modifying this motorcycle. In the end, I hope to have a nice and cheap solution to fuel controlling and for high power. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Let's go work on the bike.